Hi guys, Andy here. Something quite different for you today, the Yottaphone 2. Um, this is just a quick look at its rear display, which is uh, 4.7 inches, 960 by 540 e-ink display. Um, I think I saw somewhere that it's got kind of a 16 scale, grey scale effectively display. Um, it does have, obviously, like I said, this is the back, so this is the front of the phone. It's a perfectly normal, normal looking device. But we turn it over to see the alternative display. Now at this point, you can basically change what it shows. We unlock it by sliding up from the bottom. I can change back and forth, so that's what I normally have it on. Um, it's always on. It seems quite a bizarre concept for those of us used to sort of regular phones, so to speak. But that is always there. Because it's e-ink, it only actually takes any power to change one of the crystals from a dark crystal to a light crystal or, you know, a grey crystal. Once it's there, nothing, you know, no power at all. We could just sit there like a, like, a, um, like a Kindle. Not that I've got one, but I understand it's the same technology. Um, it's got a quite a weird feel to it. It's, it's actually quite slick. It worries me a little bit that I'm going to end up dropping the phone because it ve is a very slick back not not quite like paper paper's a little bit rougher i would have said um, but it is functional it does have a touch screen so for example i've added this screen here which has my twitter feed um <clears throat> so there's a something there about sale on google play store if i tap on that the actual tweet loads up um oh it's a hot uk deals go back it's going to load my actual feed <clears throat> Excuse me. And there is my Twitter feed that I can actually scroll through and read. Um, the theory being, this is much, much, much more battery friendly than the main screen. So, although it's not as pretty, you can read the text. I don't know how well it's coming across on the camera, but you can read the text perfectly well. You can still interact with it. So, I can open up. The actual image. Uh, do you know, I've not thought. Does it work? So I, no, I don't think it's gonna. So it's, it's locked into the one, the one display. But I could even, if I wanted, I assume. Although I don't quite see how it's gonna. There's the keyboard. Hello. So that works perfectly well as a keyboard. Um, if we flip, well, let's come back. So at the bottom there, you'll see it's got kind of notifications and they light, well, they don't light up, sorry, a little one or two or three appears. One thing I've noticed, so it has email there, but actually it's email, not Gmail. I haven't used email on a phone for about four years. Everything's piped through my Gmail. So it's a little weird that it's not linked in through that. Um, and if I tap the notification, well, okay, and this, <laughs> no other notifications. Well, otherwise it says, turn your phone over. So you turn the phone over, and, that, and then you have to read your notifications as normal. So it won't actually give me the notifications on the back, which seems a little odd in some ways. I would have thought that was kind of the point of it, but fine. Um, if we have a look in the hub, we can either have a cover where you can choose sort of Instagram pictures or I think Facebook. How did I get to it before? Maybe it's up here. Carousel. There we go. Look. Change photo every five minutes, please accept. So that's the that's the Yotto cover. Um, the Yotto panel. So these are the ones that we were seeing me just swiping through. So we can add in a preset panel. So you can have like a calendar or a clock. Actually, that clock's probably bad. I don't I don't really bother with the things. I'm just looking for the number. So I probably should switch to one of them. Let's, so let's do that. So I put that in there. Then I'm going to replace, or I'm going to remove, remove that one. Um, now I'm not sure if I can, no. I was going to try and shift it over to the left, but not possible. Anyway, the other option, you bring up a grid and you basically decide what goes into that grid. Or I think we do. Here we go. So you can put a clock or a... Um, calendar or email or you know so you can set that up twitter you can set up entirely really however you should want so that's quite cool um let's remove that again 
So if we come back out now, I believe I'm going to turn it over. And there it is, that's the panel that I just added. Now because we're locked, we don't have to worry about it. You, know, you can put that in your pocket, you can hold the device in your hand, it's not going to do anything. Um, that's fine. One thing I did notice I should have showed you before I got rid of it, in fact it probably wouldn't have been visible at this point, but the clock with the hands, after, when I woke up in the morning, there was a funny kind of shimmering of where the hand had been, so it's not like some of them it doesn't totally clear away if that makes sense not that it's a problem you can still you know you can still clearly see where the finger is just like a weird shadow effect has been left behind where the hand has been um so actually the other thing I, I can show you quickly there are a bunch of apps set up specifically to work on the back so you go in and you say new game application have been thinking on always on display and you turn the phone over And there it is. But you get the idea, you don't need to watch me. Well, I'm not even, I'm just randomly swiping things now. Um, so that's kind of cool. Get your score and your best score and stuff down the bottom. And best score, I was halfway through a game, so that's, that's not actually my best score, honestly. Um, and finally, let's come back out, if I can remember the right way there. Look at that. That's my actual home screen with my notifications um, and everything. I can open the app drawer. I can slide through the app drawer. So I can even go into a gallery app. Hopefully, loading photos. And there's a photo I took earlier. Granted, it's oh this. Let's see this goes. Oh, that's quite cool. So again, obviously that's not that's not the most impressive of photos, but it's kind of cool that you can do it on an e-ink display on the back of your device. Meanwhile, the front is still off. Um, look at that! I can even zoom in and everything. So I think that's pretty cool. You've got to give the Yotta Phone two some. Uh, some cool nerd points, if there are such a thing, for that. There you go. I would point out it's not backlit. If I turn the lights off for a second. Uh, so it's still visible, but obviously it's not. It actually looks kind of lit up a little there because the screen, my, my monitor over there, is reflecting off it. It is, it is still visible, obviously, but if I, if I could totally black out the room, it's no use at all. So when I wake up in the morning, I can't look over to see the clock on the back of the device. But, uh, but I, think, I think it's very cool. Whether or not it's worth £555, we'll wait to be seen. I will, uh, obviously I'll be doing a variety of different videos, some video tests, sound tests, head-to-heads, and of course the actual review. Um, the... So at the time of recording, it's the 22nd of December, though, so Christmas is coming. Not the day much time I'll have. Um, I'll get the review done hopefully within a week or 10 days before I have to give it back. I should say thank you very much to Clove Technology, clove.co.uk, for lending me this device to have a play with. And uh, check it out on their website. And there you go. My name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.